Alright guys, so here we are in part two of step one of how to make a replica helmet and as the title says, this is the conclusion um, hopefully I can fit it all in this one video of the sculpting step of making a replica helmet. Um, as you can see and as you saw in the time lapse video before this um, I've done quite a bit more work to the sculpt, uh, still a long ways to go obviously but um, I figured I was at the point where I could go ahead and stop and explain a little bit more about the process of sculpting. Um, now I'm going to say right off the bat that this is kind of the abstract portion of the tutorial. It's not something that I can fully explain, fully teach you guys how to do. Um, it just comes with practice and you have to learn how to use the visual, the visual cues when comparing your reference pictures to your sculpt. And as I said before in part one, this is where you need to have really good reference pictures because the better reference pictures you have, the more of them that you have in different angles and everything, that's going to really help you be able to see all the shapes on your helmet because if you have like a shape um, that doesn't make sense to your eyes and your brain at one angle if you change it to another angle in the picture sometimes it'll make sense and you can implement it and carve it out and you'll be good so the two big things you need to worry about right now are proportion and symmetry um, I think most people know what those two are you know symmetry is obviously uh, making everything look the same on both sides of the helmet and proportion is um, basically just the the size of one shape or one piece of the helmet in relation to the rest of it. So you don't want to have like a massive visor up here and then real small um, shapes down here. It doesn't make sense and that's not the way the helmet is. So you have to learn how to look at your reference pictures and implement those. Once you can see the proportion and the symmetry on your helmet and you can implement that, then you're going to be good to go and your helmet's going to start looking really good. And that's when you can start adding the details. You don't want to add details now because if you have bad proportion and bad symmetry good details aren't going to make a difference they're not going to make your helmet look any better so I'm going to go ahead and show you a few of the tools that I use and try to show you a few tips and things that I can um, just to help you get along but like I said before the main thing you're going to have to do is just practice and learn to see the different shapes and you know if it doesn't come out good the first time don't worry about it it doesn't make a difference you know you can always try again what I do so let me show you those tools okay guys so I just want to talk a little bit about the tools that I use um, I don't actually use that many tools when I'm sculpting um, uh, for this portion of the the sculpt um, when I'm kind of roughing out the symmetry and the proportions I really use my fingers a lot um, so I just want to show you an example of that so you can see this um, this angle of the helmet here and it's coming around and there's kind of like a spot right here where it doesn't it doesn't meet up these two these two portions of the line don't meet up so I need to add a little bit more clay there okay so I got a better angle here so what do you got what I do is I'll take the clay stick it on there and then usually I'll take two hands like this and I'll put my thumbs there and I'll kind of pinch it and pull it towards the clay push it around at the same time and drag it along that line there so there's the line that I'm trying to add clay to and I want to keep that line. I don't want to just smack clay on and just smear it on because then you're going to ruin that line that you already have there. So I'll pinch it, push it, and kind of smear it away from the line. If you want to make it a little smaller and you want to push the clay, and that pushes the piece of clay that way. And you just kind of work it in there like that. And then you can come back and smear it down a little bit. And you can go over the top of it if you need to make it a little smaller and that pushes the clay to the sides and then you can go back and pinch that and smooth it in and that way I have a real nice sharp line there um, and I've continued that line I filled in that little hole that was there and then I can take my tools and I can refine it even more if I want to so let me show you these other tools here this is the main tool that I use actually besides my fingers and this is a rake tool or a loop tool now you see I have a couple different kinds here. Um, these are just cheapies. You can buy like sets of these at like Michael's or Joann's, you know, or you can order them online. Um, but I usually use just the regular straight rectangle on there. Um, sometimes we use the angled one, you know, for different things, but probably like 85-90% of the time it's this uh, the straight one. And then I have these other set of here, some metal, it's kind of like a shovel shape. I use that sometimes. Um, this one here is another shovel one. This one I use for like really small details sometimes and like if I need like a sharp 90 degree angle I can dig this into the clay 
like so and that gives you a real sharp um, 90 degree angle so uh, like I mentioned before in the other part I'll use my ruler um, and I'll use it to scrape large surfaces that are just smooth and flat and I'll shape them that way and level them out and that helps me out pretty well to get a nice even even surface there those are pretty much the only tools that I use um, like I said I, I use my fingers most of the time to bulk out the shape start refining them a little bit more and then to take off larger amounts of clay or to really start refining the shapes um, to where you got nice sharp edges then I'll use my rake tool for the bigger details and the, uh, the little shovel tool for for smaller details and for general smoothing I use either that gasket scraper or the ruler so that's pretty much all I have to say about that um, I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on this start trying to get the shapes a little better and obviously as you're doing this you want to make sure you're keeping an eye on the size of your helmet because sometimes you don't bulk up the clay enough and you start carving out the shapes you're gonna be like oh the helmet's getting a little small you know so you don't want to go too far with it and have to start adding a bunch of clay back on because it's just gonna ruin all your hard work so just gotta keep an eye on that and remember proportions and symmetry those are the two big things when it comes to sculpting this helmet here so I did want to point out one thing that I forgot to mention and that was about the different tools when you're using them um, it may be intuitive to some people but I thought I'd go ahead and say it for um, people that don't don't know or haven't used the tools before so basically the rake tool um, and pretty much any tool but especially the rake tool um, you could do different pressures on the clay and therefore take off different amounts of clay so see I'm using real light pressure right now and that's taking off just the real fine shavings of clay but if I wanted to take off more clay then you can dig harder and that's gonna obviously take off more clay so just experiment around with different pressures on your helmet in different areas that you need it and you can learn how to manipulate the clay and get the right amount of clay off so just wanted to tell you that